welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, midweek supplemental. This is episode number 185. And coming up on this show, we're going to be talking about small folders. Um, Many of you may not know this, but you know I love the big folders and the big knives, but I also like small folders. I just don't have too many of them because I don't carry them quite as much. They're always secondary knives. So we're going to talk about uh, some small folders. Those are three-inch uh, blades and smaller. We're also going to be talking about a couple of new knives coming from K-Bar and from Buck. And also, uh, we'll be talking about a little bit of uh, my state of the collection. I got a couple of uh, new things coming in this week that I'm I'm quite uh, happy about, grateful for, and then I got a, a couple of things coming this week, this coming week that I'm that I'm uh, I'm really I'm I'm haunting the mailbox for right now. I mean I I know when it's supposed to come, and one of them is late and delayed, and one of them is coming from Hawaii. Oh my God, when will it be here? Luckily, it's coming on an airplane. So we'll be talking about all of that. Uh, coming up. But first, I want to talk about what I'm carrying today. Uh, my pocket check, my little my little knife warm up for the day. Show and tell. So today I'm carrying the beautiful Boker Squail. The Boker Squail is based on a um, Charles Marlowe design. Here's his, uh, here's his maker's mark. Charles Marlowe. You should, you should look him up on Instagram and just follow him because he makes the most incredibly beautiful and extremely exclusive custom knives. I mean, these are knives that uh, I just don't ever expect or even hope to own because, um, well, I'd love to talk to him in person, but uh, from what I know, he's a pretty reclusive guy and uh, he takes his time on these creations and, uh, you know, he he's, he's not in the limelight and he's, uh, you know, but give him a follow, check out his work. And then there are a couple of collectors you can link to from his site. I mean, uh, from his Instagram page that have incredible collections of these things. Uh, Boker, you know, uh, very graciously offers uh, offers this beautiful Marlowe design to the hoi polloi, the rest of us, so we can uh, actually own one of his designs. And I'm grateful for that. That's one of the, that's one of the great benefits of these uh, big production houses is being able to bring designs that are out of reach to many or most of us uh, into reach. Um, you know, it'll never be a handmade Charles Marlowe knife, uh, but this happens to be quite an excellent uh, boker. As far as I know about boker, and I don't have many, uh, they can be you know, sometimes there are issues with them quality control wise, but uh, this one is outstanding. Okay, next, uh, my secondary knife today is one I don't carry often, but that I got because it's just unique and cool. It is a Rough Rider, that's R-I-D-E-R. -E that means it's a little bit older. They went, they first started with the Y Rider and then they went to the I for a while. And then I don't know when, sometime in the early 2000s, I think they went back to the Y. So this is an older one, uh, but it's a one arm jack. One arm because it's got this scoop at the end of the razor blade there. This is a kind of a razor shaped blade. And that little scoop at the end allows you to kind of like a, an old school Emerson wave, hook it on your pocket or hook it on something and open up your pocket knife. This was a blade design that was developed after the Civil War when uh, there were many people who were missing limbs, you know, frankly, uh, soldiers after the war missing limbs still needed to open up their pocket knives. So these one arm pocket knives became, uh, became a thing. Uh, you can find high end versions of this with uh, a great Eastern cutlery. Uh, I don't think they've ever made a one arm with a locking uh, blade, but you know, this is a, a, a one that I got from Amazon on a Lark, and it's a it's a really cool little knife. So yeah, that's what I'm carrying today. Uh, th that Boker Squail, I, I don't carry it often, but when I do, I'm like, God, I, his designs. Uh, to me, I, I always say this one and several others that I have look looks like an Italian racing boat to me from like the 60s or something. A Donzi? Is that a thing? I think that's a thing. Anyway, uh, so that's what I'm carrying in the pocket today. And uh, something else I've been carrying a lot recently are these off-grid knives. And on 
It's Thursday Night Knives. We did our Patreon Gentleman Junkie giveaway. That's the $10 level uh, of monthly support. And it's one of the one of the things I look forward to most on Thursday Night Knives is the third Thursday of every month. We do a giveaway. We have a wheel with everyone's name on it, and and it's a you know it's a randomized thing. And uh, this month we were giving away an Off Grid Knives Sea Dog version two. That's the blackout edition. That's the swashbuckling, uh, big kind of saber looking uh, utility blade. Great knife. Uh, and uh, who won it? But uh, the Shredder Knife Reviews, the Shredder Knife Reviews, Ezekiel Yates, uh, a young, a young uh, kid, and his dad have a great uh, knife channel reviewing knives and thrashing knives and testing knives on YouTube called the Shredder Knife Reviews. Now, this is Ezekiel's channel. Uh, his father is there to help out and to, you know, guide him. But this is really Ezekiel's deal, and he's doing an awesome, awesome job making these knife reviews. And it's great that he won the off-grid uh, Sea Dog because I know he has a special affinity for off-grid knives. So it was, uh, you know, it was Providence. So congratulations, Ezekiel. Your knife is in the mail as you have the tracking number. Hopefully you're, you're keeping a close eye on it. Uh, but it is coming your way. I can't wait to see uh, the, the paces you put it through. And uh, I also put a little something in the box for your dad too. So uh, enjoy the knives, Ezekiel. And... Uh, uh, if you want to get in on the next knife giveaway, well, go check us out on Patreon, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still to come on the show, we'll be talking about a uh, couple of new K-bars and uh, new bucks coming our way. Whoa. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So K-Bar, we know K-Bar, they've been around forever producing the K-Bar fighting knife, uh, U.S. Marine Corps fighting knife, but they they have come so far since uh, that first knife. That wasn't their first knife, actually. Uh, they were making knives long before they made the uh, the Marine Corps fighting knife, but that's what they're known for. That's the, uh, that's the Kleenex thing, you know, Kleenex is a tissue, but well, you, you get the point. They have uh, a, a widening line, ever widening line, and one of them, and the most, uh, one of the most popular are these Ethan Becker knives, the BK knives. Uh, they're really uh, outstanding outdoors knives, and people are, you know, have always been um, kind of fervent collectors of those because of what great users they are by the campsite. So people really like the Becker knives. Well, as you can see from the screen. They're coming out with a folding version of his knives. Uh, what is this? The BK40, I think they called it. Um, but now I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, the folding, what is it? What does that say there? Well, we'll, we'll check it out. We'll find out. BK40, there it is. So Ethan Becker collaborated with K-Bar uh, to come up with a folding version of his knives. And I got to say, just looking at this, looking at the handle, looks extremely ergonomic and very much in the vein of the fixed blades. The fixed blades handles are shaped like that in silhouette, but uh, as you might know, they're kind of rounded, they're contoured, they're re uh, very hand filling. This looks like it's very hand filling on the, on the profile and it looks like they're flat slabs at G10 there. Uh, that nice clip point blade is three, I think 3.6, well, it's three and a half inches, I know that, but I think it's a little, a skosh more, I think it's 3.6. And that is a beautiful looking clip uh, point blade, I think. Uh, as you know, as you move from the ricasso towards the tip of the blade, uh, when you get to the, the widest point, right where the clip breaks, it seems to widen out. It's a, it's a, it, it has the effect of a, of a sort of downward angled blade. But if you look at the spine, the spine is aligned with the top of the handle. So you gotta, you have a really, uh, nice and broad blade profile with a lot of belly, but at the same time, a, a, a long run of flat uh, blade there. So you're kind of getting the both best of both worlds by having that clip point blade widen out so much towards the break of the tip, uh, break of the clip there. So it uh, looks like an interesting knife. Coming out in OS 8A, which is an interesting choice because this uh, I'm presuming is an outdoor knife camp knife type thing you might you would think maybe they'd go for a different like more outdoorsy blade steel like 
well, those tend to be more expensive though, I guess, like the three V or or something like that. But even 1095 on that would be cool and apropos. And I think that might be what they what they run the the um the Becker line of knives in that 1095 Crovan that K Bar is famous for. Anyway, surprising blade choice, but uh, a blade steel choice, but a beautiful looking knife, and uh, really uh, in the spirit of the rest of the Becker K Bar line. Uh, now something new is coming from Buck, and uh, Buck doesn't, I gotta say, usually excite me that much, but there are two things coming out uh, that are premium. And then several others that are budget knives, but they all have, I gotta say, a very nice, classy, clean, simple look, with the exception of one, and that is the budgie. The budgie is a little uh, sub three inch knife. It would it would go nicely in my lineup that I'm gonna show you later today. Uh, but the budgie is one of two knives coming out from Buck this year in their folding line that, that features S35 VN blade steel. Now this is a little uh, fifth pocket looking uh, looking knife. Um, it's a frame lock, looks extremely capable, quite small. And uh, I don't know, something about it is it's, it's just charming. It's got those little uh, divots carved in the back of the uh, lock arm bar. It's got a nice anodized red um, lanyard thing on the end, lanyard pommel on the end. And that sort of bullet shape opener on the, or, or anvil shaped opener on the, on the blade. S35 VN blade. Love it. it. This to me looks like something uh, I would actually want to have and might actually buy. Look at that in profile. It's it's pretty cool. And when I say actually buy, when I go to Buck, I still go for their classics, the 110, the 112, the 119. Um, those are kind of, and, and I love the hood camp designs. Ooh, this is nice with the, with the natural micarta there. I like that sort of see-through, but you can see how small this is. This is a one of those kind of charming little knives you can pull out on any occasion and use. And since it's S35VN, um, it's going to give you longer uh, edge retention. And to me, that's almost more important in the smaller blades get, that get more use. Um, so uh, this, uh, this budgie looks uh, really exciting. Also, the Paradigm which is a knife that has been around uh, for a while, but is, has gotten a bit of a retooling, is coming out. That's also coming in S35VN, and you get your choice of uh, assisted, or in this case, what we're looking at right here, which is more interesting, is the auto version. Where's the button, you say? It's not a button. It's a sliding bolster uh, um, mechanism. So if you look at the handle here, you'll see a uh, towards the butt end of the of the handle, you'll see a light tan G10. But as you move towards the, the pivot, you'll see there's a bolster. It's a darker G10, darker brown G10. And if you look uh, near the blade, you'll see there are grooves there. Those are to catch your thumb. And what you do when that blade is closed is you slide, you push the bolster and slide it like a Protec whiskers. And uh, the bolster slides over, just pivots over ever so slightly, and that releases the blade, which is... Uh, uh, trapped in there under the tension of a coil spring. So that the bolster releases it, it comes flying open. It's a, uh, uh, it's a really cool design. It's a hidden sort of feature. Excuse me, I have one version of it that, um, not of this, but I have a sliding bolster um, auto made by Microtech. Um, and and it's a, a, a very interesting mechanism because looking at it, you can't figure out how to open it unless you know. And uh, on this one, they give you those little grooves, which are a little bit of a clue. This might be how you open it. You know, your thumb just kind of wants to go there. And uh, so any, in any case, those are the two S35VN knives coming out from Buck. And I think they're both quite appealing. I like what they've done with this paradigm design. And at 209, USA made automatic S35VN from Buck, great price great price. Um, I look forward to checking it out. I, I would like to check that one out. Um, might try the assisted and I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the others I just want to talk about very briefly. They have a couple of other knives coming out that are um, just very clean in design. Uh, three and a half to three inch bladed uh, G10 and 7CR MOV steel. I'm not sure what the rest of it is. I know it's 7CR. I'm not sure what the rest of it is. Uh, uh, in any case, a 
budget steel from China. We know that it's much softer, and uh, but it's much uh, less expensive, and it's very easy to maintain. These uh, CR steels, 8CR and 7CR and 9CR, are very easy to keep honed and to sharpen. So the other knives coming out from Buck are just, um, they just seem like right on tone. Um, you know, uh, inexpensive, look, like, look at this in the Langford knife. It's inexpensive. It's sleek. It is not uh, festooned with buck, buck, buck everywhere. And it's not trying to be clever in the design. It's just classy. And they have a couple like this. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. I've, I haven't always liked the more modern buck knives, but these uh, give me something to be excited about. Uh, tell us what you're excited about. Oh, look at this. I'm sorry. Jim brought up the trunk knife. And that is one to mention because it's the first buck I've seen with this sort of cleavery blade. Um, and not for nothing, I think it's got a really great looking handle. The handle looks very comfortable, but also, um, well, neutral enough, but also with a uh, mind towards grip and ergonomics. So Buck, congratulations. Can't wait to check these things out. You don't need my congratulations. I'm just saying, Buck, happy you've gotten my my attention. So I want to check these things out. Uh, so what I was going to say is tell us what you're excited about on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to find out what, what people are looking at, what they're getting excited about. Uh, I have a couple of new things coming up that we're going to talk about in the state of the collection that uh, I want to hear what you all think about because uh, I think they're all outstanding, especially two of them here. And uh, well, I want to know what your what your opinion is, and if you uh, if you leave it and it's uh, you know if it's on point or on topic, we will uh, make a montage and get it up on the air here. So uh, still to come. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So this is a banner week. Uh, I'm still I'm still reeling from no new knife November. That was that was three months ago now. Uh, so I'm I'm making up for that lost time. And uh, this week I got some uh, really cool products in. The first I want to talk about is an upgrade um, to my Delica serrated uh, uh, Warncliffe here. This is a knife that was gifted to me generously by our good friend Stu from Stone and Steel. Uh, knife purveyor up in Vermont. And uh, he's also a law enforcement officer, carries a, uh, a Warncliffe uh, Endura serrated, and he offered me that or this. And I, I decided to go with this. I figured a Delica I would carry more, and I know for sure I was right. It came with the black scales, which are great. They're light. They're super grippy. We're all familiar with the, uh, uh, with the Spyderco uh, FRN scales. But recently I was lurking on uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works and uh, I was looking at handle scales for hinderers and I came across handle scales for the Delica. And they have brass, what is it? Brass, copper, uh, titanium, uh, I think. I think those are the three. And uh, I love brass and copper. I love the way they patina, but they also leave your hands smelling weird. And I just, wasn't up for that. And they're quite heavy. They're heavier than titanium. So I opted for these titanium scales. Uh, you get two of them for $70, I believe. I mistakenly uh, said that they were flytanium on on Thursday Night Knives, but then, uh, you know, the titan uh, the flytanium brand of scales, but they aren't. They're Smoky Mountain Knife Works, but they are uh, excellent. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the internal, the guts of the Delica, the Indela, or the Endura, but they're a pain in the butt uh, to get that backspacer back on with the liner, the second liner. So putting this together, it took me about a half hour to do just because that backspacer, there's a little tab that has to fit in a notch on the backspacer. And once you have the spring in there, the spring uh, deforms the shape of the backspacer a little bit. And so it makes fitting the notch in the tab very difficult. Uh, if you can follow that. So uh, in any case, it took me a while to set up, but now that it's set up, it will never change. I'll never go back. Uh, so I really like this uh, great product. Check it out. If you're looking for uh, some scales for your Endura, your, in, I don't know if they do Endella, they do Enduras and Delicas and several others. Uh, look, look on Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. I believe they use 
maybe their Rough Rider factory in China to make these one of their one of their knife making capabilities, and they do a great job. So check it out. Next was one that I was very excited about when I saw it. As I was um, on Blade HQ and looking around, I decided, you know, I should I should look for some smaller knives because I always let me let me put it this way. I have a special affinity for the designs of smaller knives. Uh, some of some of the best designs are in the three inch to three point one five inch uh, blade length. And uh, I decided um, but for me, three and lower is is more my small knife wheelhouse because it they always end up in my back right pocket. And anything too much bigger than that, it's like, well, I may as well just have a full size. So um, looking around at three inch blades, and I saw that CRKT has come out with a new version of the uh, Pilar. And the original Pilar was a blockbuster, is a blockbuster. People are still flocking to that knife. Uh, I had one, I had the original version with the full stainless steel handle. That was a, a thick stainless steel slab on top and a thick stainless steel frame lock and a, what was it, two and a half inch uh, kind of sheep's foot cleavery blade. Beautiful knife designed by Jes uh, Jesper Voxnez of Denmark. And, uh, and then they made a second iteration of it, flipper, larger, and then mixed in some D2 and some different handle materials. That was the version two. And then this is the version three. It's got a full three inch blade. And uh, if you look at it, it's got the same or very similar ergonomics handle wise, uh, but a little bit stretched out, a little bit lighter because that steel lock bar side is much thinner on this. Well, maybe I shouldn't say much, but it is noticeably thinner and lighter on this version than it is on the original. And uh, this G10 side has no liner and it's a pretty thin piece of G10. Uh, this one is 8CR13 MOV, and you can tell because of that silver color anodized backspacer or that raw aluminum. They make a D2 version, and that is uh, that backspacer is anodized bronze. I learned that uh, from someone, now I can't remember who it was, but on the video I made the, of this, I said it was D2. Someone said, wait a second, that's got the wrong backspacer for D2. And I was like, oh, I didn't know about that. Looked into it. And yes, this one is 8CR13 MOV. And then the upscale version in D2 has the bronzed backspacer. Now look at this. No, not the dry skin on my fingers. But look at the backspacer here. Deep carry in a notch with countersunk screws. Why can we not all do this? It's 2021, people. Why can we not all do this? There is an attrition rate on your pockets with a deep carry pocket clip that has the domed screws and sits proud of the handle. It, there just is. Even though they're rounded, they will tear your pants up. And so it is nice to, to see that. Anyway, I, I really like this um, iteration of the Pilar best. To me, I like it because it of that point. It's got a very nice, acute point. And that point is center line to the lanyard hole and the uh, pivot. So it's right in the right place uh, for using that point for you know opening clamshell packages, whatever kind of puncturing task you're gonna use this for. The point is in the right place, but you still get the benefit of that full belly uh, that you have on the original and you get a slimmer blade steel. So it's very slicey, very, very lovely knife. I'm using very a lot. To, uh, now it makes me want to go back and get the Pilar 2 uh, with the flipper and the uh, larger blade and check that out. The Pilar 1 I had, loved it. I gave it to my cousin and hopefully he loves it. So here this is. So the CRKT, now look at this real quick and then, and then I'll get on to the third one. But look at this real quick with the CRKT Pete, another Jesper Voxnez design. Another great, great little knife. Very inexpensive. This one has the FRN handles and the blue anodized backspacer. But you can see a family resemblance here, right? You can tell that, that these were drawn by the same hand. And that Pete you'll, it is coming up later. Great little knife. All right. So la uh, not lastly, nextly on my list of new knives this week 
is one I've been really looking forward to. Made by a designer I've been following on Instagram for a long time. He's from France called K Max Rom. And it's the, uh, it's the Pelican by Concept Knives. So uh, K Max Rom's uh, main design, you've seen it, uh, or I've seen it in small EDC fixed blades. I've seen it in karambity kind of knives. I've seen it in big fixed blades and in folders. It's this Pelican design. And the Pelican is, uh, his Pelican blade design, from my point of view, is um, you can tell because of the peaked thumb ramp, there's a deep thumb swell. And then usually it's it's a uh, full bellied kind of worn cliffy uh, blade blade shape. This obviously is uh, is the Tanto version, uh, but this guy you you got to give him a follow. His his designs are beautiful, and he's had uh, let's see he had a Pelican des um, design three and a half inch blade from Kaiser. I think that's still out there. It's a it's a different different look than this concept knife. Concept, uh, incidentally, uh, is made up of people who came from uh, Kaiser. So it's got a very similar build quality. I mean, the engineering on this thing is really great. I mean, I would definitely put it there uh, with with Kaiser, with we, uh, excuse me, with those, uh, with those high-end Chinese manufacturers making these luxurious knives. This, of course, is on bearings. And I forgot to mention before that the uh, the new Pilar is also on bearings. Um, extremely, extremely sharp. Now, I'm switching hands because I can't spidey flick with my left hand, but this is a great knife just to spidey flick out. Uh, you can see some great reviews of this knife on um, Nick's channel. Stasa, Stasa23 has, uh, I think he has both models, this beautiful Tanto and the other sort of drop point Warren Cliffy thing. So check out K Max Rum on Instagram. And if you've been on the fence or wondering about this little three inch beauty, uh, I'm here to tell you, it's awesome. This is a titanium handle, by the way. Love that clip. Uh, that's great. That's a great clip for all different kinds of pockets, I gotta say. So beautiful knife. Uh, last on my list of things that came in this week, this was just an impulse buy. This is yeah, this is like picking up a People magazine at the at the at the grocery store um, because I was on Smoky Mountain Knife Works looking for these titanium handle scales. I always go to the flash sale. Uh, it's usually ten knives, eight to ten knives that they're slashing prices, and this was up there. This is the Cold Steel holdout little double-edged fixed blade two and a half inch i think yeah little double-edged fixed blade it's got what's interesting to this uh, about this to me is that it's very very light very small and slight and you know you wear it and forget about it um it is a little long uh, for neck knives most people like them a little bit shorter but to me i i just forget it's there. But the, the real interesting and unique point about this is that it's two Scandi blades, uh, you know, two Scandi edges on both sides. Uh, if you know the Spike series and and the, uh, well, especially the Spike series of um, neck knives from Cold Steel, they are in these zero ground edges. So, um, you know, like a Scandinavian style outdoor, like Puko knife or something. And uh, it proves to be very strong and very sharp and incidentally or not for nothing easy to sharpen and keep stropped that angle. If you have a hard time with stropping, that angle is very easy to keep uh, because it's just one angle. The, the, the bevel is the edge and it goes all the way up to the flat. So easy enough to sharpen and maintain. Uh, one thing about the uh, cold steel neck knives is they're usually made of, um, uh, 14, uh, an inexpensive Krupp steel from Germany. Um, you know, Krupp's, Krupp steel is, is great steel, but they, they use a very inexpensive version. This one has the Aus 8A, and you know that Cold Steel does an, an outstanding job with their Aus 8A. So this is a, this is a step above the other uh, blade steels that they use on their, um, well, on their less expensive uh, sort of uh, neck knives, neck knives. 
so there you have it. That is my <laughs> that is my state of the collection for this week. A new handle, two new three inch blades, and one cool daggery neck knife. Still to come, we're going to talk about my small folders and really dig in. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. Large knives. You know I love them. It's like this boker squail I'm carrying today. Four inches is perfect. Bigger is even better. Uh, but also, the small knives. Man, the small knives can be quite beautiful, quite fetching, and... Um, you know, can be wonderful things of their own. Uh, before I get into my own list, I want to show you this knife that uh, Alex of Alex's Knife Box loaned me, and it is a small knife. This is an Olamic Cutlery Busker, and it is a piece of jewelry. It is a piece of pocket jewelry. If you could see this, if you're not, if you're only listening, it is all manner of blue anodized titanium and multicolored, um, uh, 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 Timascus and all sorts of beautiful, beautiful work. Now, I've mentioned many times this knife um, I don't find attractive until I'm looking at it in person in hand and have it uh, have it in hand. It feels good in hand and it works great. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of its looks. And that is where that is where the three-inch knives are most important to me. It's kind of all right, so I'm going to put this away. I love this thing. Uh, I, I wouldn't own it myself, but I'm, I'm very grateful that I've had a chance to experience it because it really is a piece of workmanship. But the thing I like about it is its preciousness. It is a small, precious thing, but it does its job robustly and, and very well. And that's what I, I think I like best about these small knives is that they, ha they, they have a contrasting nature. Um, on one end, they're small, they're, they're precious is not the right term. I don't know what, what is, but they appeal to me on their small size and their, their, the fact that you can grasp it in your hand and almost hide it in your hand. And, um, and it's not, and, and, and it's a more realistic thing to carry and use. And you can, um, you know, proudly use it instead of pulling out the Boker Squail and kind of hiding it if you're in the lunchroom. Okay. All right. That being said, let's, let's just get into it. So the first one uh, that really, it's one of my favorites is the Spyderco Sage 2. This was a gift uh, 2014 Christmas, I think it was, from my wife. And uh, this is such a great knife. It's, it is Spyderco's uh, Ode or, um, Ode to Chris Reeve integral lock there. So that's what the Sage series was. They all had this profile, three inch uh, leaf shaped blade uh, with this profile handle, uh, but they had different locking mechanisms and those locking mechanisms were um, uh, brought about by various Sage's wise men of the knife world. So this is one that I love and being a gift, it will be one I never get rid of. Uh, it is a great back pocket carry. It is thin and light. And that's where these end up riding the most. Back right, uh, back left pocket with my bandana, basically. And, uh, you know, sometimes I get paranoid that uh, it could be pulled out and used against me or just pulled out. Uh, but I don't ride the subways anymore. I don't do things where I'm crowded in with people anymore. So I don't worry about that as much. I did have a guy come up to me at one of my daughter's uh, spring concerts a couple of years ago, older guy, who's like, I see both of your knives and and where I've worked, people would take them and use them on you. So you better hide them. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right. Next up, Benchmade Griptilian. Small Griptilian. This, uh, this is in the 154 CM blade steel. I got this on a Lark once at uh, um, REI and uh, never liked the handle, the GRN handles that were small and light and your hands slip off the back. So I got the AWT scales that stands for Applied Weapons Technology. And they're a company that does anodizing, or um, I should say uh, aluminum parts and anodizing for, for rifles. At least that's what they were doing when I bought these. And they were also 
offering um, these handles for uh, the Gratillion models. I loved this color. I got the pink backspacer and the gray, uh, gunmetal gray, thinking that maybe someday one of my daughters would get this. I gave it a little flash of pink. Now, neither of them like pink, but well, there you have it. This is kind of a purpley, so maybe that'll do. But I love how anodized aluminum takes on wear. And the Griptilian blade is really excellent. 154 cm steel. I'm going to try and hold this steady for you. 154 cm steel is one of my favorites. And uh, I did this on my KME sharpener. It's super sharp now. The point is nice. And this is just one of my favorite little throw in the pocket, throw in the back pocket uh, knives. Now, the one thing it doesn't have that you'll find a lot of these have is a slender handle. This AW, uh, uh, AWT, ATW <laughs> handle scale is boxy and, and a little squared off, but it makes it uh, good in hand, but maybe not as good in the pocket, but uh, the slenderness of this gives it a pass. The, the height of it. Okay, next, one of my favorites from last year, 2020, the Cold Steel Folding Kiridashi. This sucker, you know, this this keeps coming in. This is a cast member of the show. I, I keep bringing this knife in, but it is a great utility knife. Little, it's an inexpensive, I think about 28 bucks. You've got the GRN hand, or the Grivery handle with this nice looking pattern. I'm glad they don't, it doesn't have like a, cold steel logo pattern. I hate when companies do that, like Kershaw, like putting their K all over the place. It just makes it look cheesy. Uh, they have a nice little pattern here. It's grippy enough, but it's the ergonomics of this that wins the day. You know, you put this in your hand, you put your thumb up there and, you know, you're ready for hours of cutting. Well, you will have to strop it <laughs> because this is in that German steel I was talking about. And what is it? Uh, Oh, 4034 stainless steel. Uh, so this is not the German one, but this is another kind of inexpensive stainless steel. But this thing is sharp. It, it gets sharp quickly. And uh, it's a great thing to pop in the pocket. Very, very light. And the handles are contoured and rounded. So it just makes it comfortable in the pocket. You'll uh, The 800-pound gorilla in the room is this ugly pocket clip. What are they doing going back to GRN pocket clips? But on this little knife, it works great. You don't feel it. It, it. It's actually, it helps fill out the palm even more. It's a small knife, but that broad GRN clip acts as a, a widener for the handle. So when you, when you really grip on this thing, which you might want to do when you're horsing through material with that blade, you got a little bit more to fill your palm. So I actually, in this case, um, uh, you know, on paper, I hated the fact they were doing that with that clip, but it really works in practice. It's great. So that is the Cold Steel Kiridashi. Next is a classic, one of my absolute favorites, probably the last or second to last one of these knives I would get rid of if I had to. Uh, this is the Ontario Rat 2. This is the Aus 8 edition. And as you can see, it's in pink and black. And I call it uh, Pinky Tuscadero after Fonzie's girlfriend. Um, my daughter got this for me um, when she was very little. You know, she told my wife she wanted to get me a pink knife. My wife asked. I said, hey, how about this one? And this is what they got. And I love this thing. Now, the Rat 2 and the Rat 1, but just amazing phosphor bronze washer action. Just amazing action. Just the slightest nudge. Whoops, that was, I guess, too slight a nudge. But the slightest nudge sends it rocketing out. This was the first um, thumb stud knife that I had that I really realized the importance of dialing in the detent for the thumb flick, but also to be able to slow roll it out. Of course, this is a liner lock, which makes it easier to slow roll out because you're not contacting the backside of the lock bar and holding it shut. Sometimes um, frame lock knives with uh, thumb studs are hard to slow roll out because of that very reason. You need to grip the handle and grip that uh, back, uh, the lock. That's, I mean, that's the case, especially on small, small and thin knives that you have to grip. Okay, so a knife that you saw earlier is the CRKT Pete. 
This is also a uh, Jesper Voxnes design. This came out in 2020, I believe. This was a 2020 release. You've got the blue anodized backspacer, uh, GRN handles that are very light and, you know, thin. You can squeeze them a little bit there. You've got a liner lock and you've got this beautiful blade. So useful, so thin. Yeah, let me rub it off. I get obsessed with the fingerprints. All right, and I'll try and hold it still. There you go. Uh, this is a great inexpensive knife. Fills the hand beautifully. It's uh, it's that that Vox look. You can tell it's just all of his his uh, design vocabulary in this knife. You can switch the pocket clip, and oh, what do you know? Unlike a twenty-eight dollar knife, they countersink the pocket clip in its own little notch, and they countersink the screws, so that you get no disruption pulling it in and out. So I'm telling I'm telling you all out there who are making these knives for us which we are grateful for, of course. But if, you know, if you're charging more than 28 bucks for your knife that has a fold over deep carry pocket clip, you might consider uh, the courtesy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sounding like a snot right now. I don't mean that. You might think about countersinking the screws. It does matter. It does matter. And, and you know, if you want to, if you want to mill a little notch in there for the, the clip itself to rest in so that there's absolutely Zero interference when you come in and out of your pocket, you know, that would be even better because it would save our on our wardrobe budgets. And I know we all have wardrobe budgets that we have to be concerned about. So thank you for listening. All right. Next, one of the coolest knives of 2020. It's uh, yeah, this came out in 2020. The Finch Runtley. The Finch Runtley, the adverb for a knife. I think Runtley is kind of an adverb. Yeah. Anyway, uh, cool little weird design, cleavery, worn cliffy, sax type thing. Um, this company has a background in watchmaking. And so they have these little luminous shields on their knives, which is such a cool, cool little feature. Let's see. I'm going to turn off this light for a second. Just this one. And see if you can see the glow here. No, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that another time. The blade here, you have this incredible thin ground. I mean, it's, it's a thin blade, but it's ground into a wedge. This thing is tremendously sharp. And I used this this year as my exclusive unboxing knife for all the, all the kiddies toys at Christmas. You all know what I'm talking about there. Everything that, that a child, you know, every child's toy is, is just, battened to its packaging so that I guess so that people don't steal them in the stores but man it's a complex thing to extract a toy from its package these days and this was the perfect little knife for it uh, small sharp and and actually this uh, this blade sh shape up here this sort of wedge shape up front allows you to get into spots like into say a um, uh, a zip tie there and then you can use this to pry off of, and you can snap zip ties really well with this. So that's uh, that's what this, the, the main job of this knife so far has been unboxing things. Uh, it is on uh, bearings and has super smooth action. And I love on these small knives, liner locks, because you're not running into that thing where you're depressing the, the lock. Great little knife, this Finch Runtley. Now they have a couple of other, a number of other knives that have come out. You should check out Bearded Gears channel. Jake has a bunch of uh, reviews of, of the Finch knives. And uh, I, I like the way they look. And I love the way this Runtley performs. Okay, next is another CRKT. This is a, a one you might not uh, think would go on this list. Uh, but it definitely deserves to be. It was on last week's list too. And it is the CRKT Provoke. That was, I, I wanted that to be a really cool snap, you know, when Jim cut to my hand, but uh, I'm, I'm dealing with my left here. Uh, this is the CRKT Provoke. It's a Caswell design. Joe Caswell is a custom knife maker slash designer uh, slash um, engineer who is known for his really unique 
and robust and strange, um, maybe strange isn't the way to go, unique engineering and uh, in his folding knives. And this is, uh, I don't know, chief among them maybe. So this karambit, you hold in your hand like this, you stick it in your pocket using this cool spring clip, P-shaped uh, spring clip here. So it nestles in there nicely. So what you do is you hold it in your hand like this, closed, with your thumb resting on the actuator. And all you have to do is kind of open your grip a little and push down with your thumb. And these two arms swing out and lock down. There's the lock right here. So right under the ring is the lock. You depress the lock. You can clear this. You can clear the arms can clear the lock and shut back up. Yeah, it's gimmicky. And it looks like it's, uh, you know, it looks like it's made just to be a cool thing, but it's a really, really stout and capable karambit too. Great design in terms of the blade angle to the handle. Uh, all of this here looks like it might be uncomfortable or pinchy, and it isn't. All of the chamfering on these arms here and on the parts here really make this grip uh, very, very comfortable. So yeah, CRKT Provoke, and that blade is, uh, what is that? Like two and a half inches. So uh, great, great knife there. The next knife represents a mm, resurrection. Mm, not the right word, because they, they, didn't, they didn't die. But SOG felt like they were dying a little bit. And SOG, or Studies and Observation Group, uh, for a while, you know, they lost their compass and their, their, their stuff was really cheap and being sold cheaply at, at places where you buy cheap stuff. And uh, they decided to change things up a little bit, uh, or, or a lot bit, change their design philosophy, and um, that's what they did. They, they created a whole new line of knives, many of them based on the traditional or the legacy designs. Um, but this one, this is the Kiku XR. Kiku, uh, based on uh, the designs of a Japanese knife maker that they have gone to before to make uh, other knives, so some fixed blade knives and a couple of larger uh, folders. But this uh, came out when they started doing the XR lock. That's their version of the bar lock. And uh, this really takes the cake because before... I don't know if you remember this, but the SOG knives you were buying three or four years ago and uh, up to 10 years ago were covered with SOG everywhere. It was milled into the handle. It was written all over the blade. It was milled into the pocket clip. It was everywhere you could fit the word SOG in the most, in the most indiscreet way it, it was done. So this is such a welcome breath of fresh air. You've got micarta. You've got an awesome bar lock. They really... On this Kiku, they really nailed it. Now, I have I have the bar lock on an older Terminus, and it wasn't quite dialed in yet. But on this and on the Seal XR and uh, other more premium new SOG, SOG, Studies and Observation Group knives, the XR lock is working great. This is CTS XHP, a hard one for me to say. And that blade shape is really great and useful. Yeah, it looks menacing and, and totally bad to the bone, but it's also very useful. This front portion here is great for puncturing and getting into, say, clamshell packages or getting into things and, and doing that kind of a cutting. And then back here with this hollow ground, it's nicely, deeply hollow ground there and recurved. It's great for long cutting, like, you know, if you're cutting a, a length of cardboard or something or getting into rope and pull cutting on rope. So this is a great, great knife, and it's only three inches in length. So it's probably my most uh, robust three-inch three inch, uh, folder there. All right, two more, and they're classics. This one I had to borrow back from my wife. It is the Kershaw Leak. I love this knife, and I don't even know why I gave it to my wife. I think it was to keep it in the family, but to, uh, to get it out of my case so I could fit other things. I shouldn't say I don't know why I gave it to my wife. Of course, of course I want my wife to have this knife. But at the same time, I like knowing that I can just go and, and 
take it from her when I want it. <laughs> but so this is such a beautiful and classic design. I happen to love it best in this black, black on black. That classic Warncliffe shaped blade really, I should put my hand behind it so that it doesn't lose focus. That classic worn ship, uh, Warncliffe blade with a, a, just a slight bit of belly there for extra cutting is hollow ground and super thin. And that tip, you know, it's amazing that it survived in this household, but that tip is so fine and so perfect for certain tasks. This is the kind of knife that you will dig splinters out with. This is that kind of knife, but just a beautiful shape. I wish they would come out with a premium version of this that didn't have the speed safe. And, you know, speed safe is fine. But on this particular knife, it, it has been so finicky and required so much um, upkeep over the years. Uh, I feel like I'm constantly taking this apart and putting it back together. Uh, back together. Who knows? Maybe this one is a lemon. But I would love to see the Kershaw with IKB or the Kershaw leak in IKBS. Never took that back lock off either. It's kind of a weird thing. So that lock is so that you don't actuate it by accident, which just to, uh, it seems like an antiquated detail. Okay, we're putting that down. And lastly, but not leastly, one of my absolute favorites, and that is the Delica by Spyderco. Now this one was given, given to me by my daughters, uh, hence the purple handle. And uh, yeah, just a great, great knife. This has it all. This has it all. It's got style. I love that it comes in so many different colors. Now you can get it in a number of different steels. Uh, there, you know, you can get this in LC200N. Uh, you can get it serrated. Uh, you can you can get it with all different handle colors, and you know you can you can customize it like I did my other one with tight you know with aftermarket handles. It's thin. It is light. The blade is very thin. Fully flat ground, slicey as all get out. You know, this is a real, real cutter. Fits great in the back pocket, and uh, you forget it's there until you need it. Um, this is a knife that wore a lanyard for a long time, and uh, and then I took it off. But this knife works great in the bottom of the pocket with a lanyard. The lanyard helps keep it oriented north to south. It's light. These uh, the grippy texture also helps keep it oriented north to south. So I think among them, the Delica is probably my favorite. But these, the Delica and the and the Rat too, um, definitely for sentimental value. But but also just you know, if you're gonna pay, if you're gonna pay a nominal amount of money for for one of these knives, I would say go for this. If you if you want to go very inexpensive, go for the Pete. You know, it's great. Um, but all of these knives represent what I like in a small knife three inches or smaller, but with capability. Each one of these is a very, very capable knife in its own right. Of course, the Provoke is capable in, it, it is a capable knife, but that's not the reason I got it. I got it because the design is just so unique. And if you want a, a real Joe Caswell custom morphing, uh, morphing Karambit, you're gonna be paying, well, custom Joe Caswell money, uh, which most of us don't have, at least not in our knife budgets. So, uh, so the CRKT is offering that knife uh, to 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 those of us. And now they have it in a an FRN version. So all of those moving parts are FRN. Now, so far, the only ones I've seen have been gaudy colors like yellow and orange. But uh, who knows? Maybe maybe uh, maybe I haven't seen them all. And not for nothing, but for a dangerous kind of weapony thing because the provoke isn't just your average EDC it is kind of a weapon to do it in orange and yellow seems weird because because they do fake guns in that in those bright colors and I don't know might send a weird message though I do know that they are marketing the provoke as a first responder tool um, so those bright colors might be uh, apropos to that use. Uh, but to me, I, the first time I saw it, I was like, hmm, looks kind of like a toy gun, like the way color a toy gun. And that might not be the thing to do 
with a real actual weapon. Uh, before I wrap, uh, I just want to do two two um, also rans or, or runners up. And these are fixed blades, but they're small, and I'm going to just put them under the knife cam. They are my um, my uh, Bastinelli uh, diagnostic and the CRKT um, minimalist designed by Alan Foltz. These two knives have gotten so much daily carry and use for me over the years. This one for many years, and then this one for the last year or so. And they are small, extremely capable knives and fixed. You know, this this was all about folders, but these little tiny fixed blades, don't let the size fool you. They are really handy, handy, useful things to have around your neck. Um, if you if, are work in a place that you can do it, uh, it works great. You know, they work great on the back of the of the of the um, IDs that you wear around your neck. Get a little neck knife back there and you have extreme utility. Boom. All right. Well, I want to thank you for hanging out with me and uh, checking out my my uh, small three inch bladed knives. I have I have another one on the way, which I'm looking forward to. And then uh, I, I got on a pre-order, which I don't usually do. It's not a pre-order. I shouldn't say that. It's a email me when it gets in list for the Matthew Christensen designed We Thug, a small uh, EDC uh, 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 titanium, <laughs> sorry, a small titanium Tanto EDC frame lock uh, that I actually had the prototype of that Matthew sent me that I did uh, a couple of videos on a little while back. So check it out. I really want to get that in this, in the company of this, uh, the Concept Pelican. So definitely uh, check out that designer, K Max Rom. And uh, if you don't, consider the small knives. They are uh, very useful, very easy to tuck away. And you'll find some really, really great designs in there. Uh, I just recommend you carry it with a larger knife just in case, you know, a bear comes around or something like that. In any case, I want to thank you for watching and listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. This has been uh, episode number 185. Uh, check us out on Instagram uh, for some pictures and updates on the podcasts that are coming out. We put, on, uh, we put up audiograms that um, have little excerpts from the show. So check us out there. Um, follow us there. Go to uh, YouTube. I guess you're already here. Click the like button or smash it, as the kids say, and uh, subscribe. Also, share videos if you don't mind. That would be a great thing. If you share, uh, if you have a friend that likes Tantos and you think uh, this might be interesting to him, send it to him. All right. In any case, or her, in any case, I'm Bob DeMarco. And for Jim, uh, working his magic behind the switcher, I want to say thank you. And we will see you here next week. The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.